as a general rule, the better your English, the more success you'll have in IELTS. So focus on that. Welcome to episode three of IELTS Prepared by IDP, your trusted guide for test day success. I'm your host, Rocco Negro, and today I'm talking to Don Oliver about how to prepare for IELTS. You might recognize Don from our IDP masterclasses. He has taught English in Australia, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East, and has more than 30 years experience in IELTS test development and preparation. Welcome, Don. Thanks, Rocco. Um, I'd like to start with a myth that I hear that if you're a native speaker, you don't need to prepare for the IELTS test. Is it true? Uh, it's not true, really. Uh, I know not a lot of native speakers think that, well, you know, I've been using English all my life, therefore I'm going to sail through the test. But really, the demands of an English language test are a little bit different to the demands of using English on a day-to-day -day basis. I would expect uh, native speakers to get a, a very good score for speaking, for example. But one of the assessment criteria is, are you able to speak at length? And a lot of native speakers just fail to do that. And so that means that the examiner finds it difficult to give them so, so really they should school. really know what the criteria for the test are. That's a good a good start. Look at the criteria and uh, also do some practice tests because you need to know what the types of questions are to understand the sort of response you need to give, particularly in writing because uh, a native speaker is not necessarily a good speller. Uh, they're not necessarily very good at punctuation or paragraphing, for example. So those are things that really uh, you need to show that you are an expert user of the language, not just a native speaker. Don, let's talk a bit about what test takers should focus on in their IELTS preparation. How necessary is it to set uh, study goals? Well, it's very important. Um, it's a matter of efficiency. And one of the things that you should do as a test taker to prepare is to look at the assessment criteria, is to do some preparation and practice tests, find out where you need to improve. The example that I often give to uh, candidates is that if you're getting a 6.5, that means that some parts of your writing or your speaking are at the band 7 level. And that means that you don't need to improve those parts. You need to improve the parts where you're getting the six. It might just be a, a couple of minor things, perhaps, holding them back. It could well be. Uh, it, for example, with speaking, it could be some pronunciation difficulties. Uh, with writing, it might be a matter of not actually answering the question fully. So how can they identify their own weaknesses? Well, it helps to have a teacher. It helps to have someone who's advice you can trust as an expert user of the language. IELTS preparation courses are a good idea. Uh, do all of those things. But of course, the best preparation in many ways for success at IELTS is to improve your English. And that means to take every opportunity to learn new words, new structures, use the language. And revision is a very important part of that. Why do you think revision is so important, Don? Well, when we learn a language, if we learn a new word, if we don't use it again very quickly, within a day even, and mm. again, then we lose it. Yeah. And uh, revision and making it a regular occurrence, having a routine is a very important element, I think. Mm. Uh, some people find it hard to make a routine. How can they set that? What's some good mm. advice? Well... Routine, I tell my kids this, routine is everything, right? If you, if you do 10 minutes every day, by the end of the week, you've done an hour or more. But really, there are opportunities that we sometimes miss. Um, you're waiting for the train on the, uh, at the train platform or you're on the bus or you're having your breakfast. Make that an, an occasion 
for reading or doing something like that. They can read the news. Yeah. There was some good advice given to me. Um, instead of saying, I'm going to go for a five-kilometre run, start with, I'm going to put on my running shoes. Now, that's an easy <laughs> task. And then you find, well, I've got my running shoes on. I may as well go for a run. For IELTS, it might be, OK, I'm going to open my IELTS preparation book at breakfast. That's a start. It is. When it comes to speaking and writing, uh, people like to practice, but sometimes it's hard for them to get feedback on what they're using. So any suggestions there? Well, with writing and speaking, producing uh, accurate uh, grammar, uh, using words correctly, these are very important and things that you cannot really uh, check for yourself. So you need to find friends, people whose advice you trust, uh, find a teacher. If you do that, then you're halfway there, really. And can they perhaps identify a weakness that you can't identify yourself? Yeah, absolutely. We're blind to our own weaknesses. Speaking personally, that's very yeah, true. me too. Mm. Let's talk about making time for study, Don. A lot of people are very busy in their life. They've got work commitments, family commitments... They may also be studying another course. How can they make time to prepare for the IELTS test? Yeah, well, uh, time is, uh, is difficult to uh, handle, especially if you've got children, for example, and you and I both have children. We know what it's like. But discipline is what you need, and you need to actually, as I said before, go back to a routine. And if you have a routine, then people will know, well, I can't... I can't disturb Rocco over his breakfast because he's studying for IELTS, for example. Sharing the routine with others can be helpful too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, study groups are a brilliant idea. Does that help with motivation? I think so, for sure, mm. yeah. So with the time spent on study, should it be short periods of time or long periods of time? Well, I would always suggest that frequency uh, is the most important thing. So if it's just a matter of 15 minutes every day, that's probably better than doing a couple of hours and then leaving it for a week. Mm. Um, ideally, of course, frequency and duration right. is, is the ideal. <laughs> I guess being consistent every day is, is helpful. Yeah. What about with distractions? Sometimes people have technology that will interrupt them, mm -hmm. other people will interrupt them. How can someone ensure that they can focus well? Well, I don't know if this is a, a myth, but I believe some people can turn off their mobile phones. I've never <laughs> tried it myself, but I'm sure it's possible. Things like that. I mean, self-discipline. I sound like a, an old fogey, really. <laughs> but are, are mobile phones a real distraction or are they a tool, perhaps? Well, they can definitely be a tool. And... Uh, you will find our app on your mobile phone is a, a very useful tool. Don, in the next part, I want to chat a little bit about choosing preparation resources for the IELTS test. Where can test takers find some useful resources to help them prepare? Well, there are a lot of resources, but I would always uh, focus on the ones that are the most authentic ones, and that means that you should look at the IDP uh, IELTS website. Please download the uh, IELTS.IDP app because that's very useful, especially on your mobile phone. And there will be links to other preparation materials in the show notes. What type of materials? Well, there will be uh, preparation tests, practice tests, uh, there will also be videos. There will be things like uh, the uh, Macquarie uh, preparation uh, course. There are so many of them. Mm. But uh, look at the notes and you'll find them all. When it comes to practice, should test takers just do practice tests only? That's a very good question, Rocco, because I know some test takers who think, well, I'm going to do seven practice tests this week. Mm. I think that's not a very good use of time because... You might be simply making the same mistakes seven times mm. in a row. I would always recommend that you use a practice test as an opportunity to learn a bit of English as well and to analyse your performance. So instead of doing a test and then leaving it, come back to that test. 
which questions were easy, which questions were difficult. What part of the reading can I use in my own writing, for example? There might be some useful vocabulary in the article, I Absolutely. Guess. So it's, it's an opportunity not just to practice the form of the test, but it's also an opportunity to improve your English. I wonder if it's therefore better to use the practice tests um, periodically? I think that is a good idea because the, f the main focus should be improving your English, really. And so spend a couple of weeks uh, practising uh, using English, reading a lot, uh, listening to, to podcasts, for, and then see if that improves your performance on the practice test. One of the resources provided by IDP are the masterclasses. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about those? Well, the masterclasses are very valuable. Uh, they run for about one and a half to two hours and uh, there's an opportunity for people to ask the presenter questions at the end. You can get responses straight away. Absolutely. And you can get uh, an overview of every part of the test. Those masterclasses are regularly conducted via the web, webinars, and uh, will be face-to-face -face in, in certain centres uh, you can find out from your test centre when they are scheduled, but I would recommend them highly. Uh, how would a test taker be able to trust resources they, they find online? Yeah, well, the resources online that purport to be uh, IELTS preparation are of variable quality. So I would recommend that you go to the IDP sources first, IDP and its partners, and when you find that material, then you can be assured yes. that that is authentic and uh, is not giving you any false information. Well, we know that's all prepared by experts. So. That's, that is correct. So, Don, with all these preparation resources and test taking with IELTS, what can be some benefits for someone to go through this process? One of the obvious benefits, of course, is that they have a score that they can show a, an employer, a government or, uh, a body, an organisation. But beyond that, uh, when you are studying for IELTS, you're improving your English. And that's the greatest benefit, I think. To ma actually master a language, of, uh, another language, is something that uh, stays with you forever and opens up many, many doors. And therefore people can succeed in other aspects of their life, I uh, guess. That is very true, Rocco. Next, I'd like to show you some test taker questions that we've received and I'd like to know what you think or some advice from you. The first one is how long should I prepare before taking the IELTS test? How long do I need? Well, uh, this of course is very variable. Uh, if, for example, you are at a band six and you want to get a band seven, it may take you half a year or more to do that. Uh, if you're at a band four and you want to get to a band five, it may take you much less time. Mm. It really depends on what level you're at and what sort of a learner you are. Uh, I know that some people uh, are in an English-speaking country, but they very rarely use English. Right. They stick with their friends and they're speaking their first language. Uh, if you're one of those people, it's going to take you quite a long time to improve your English. But if you're another type of person who takes every opportunity to use the language and studies routinely, then it's going to speed up very quickly. So it really depends on, on the person and where they're starting from, I guess. Yeah, I think so. What about with, um, this is the second question we've, we've received, some people have taken the test, they didn't get the score that they needed, how long should they wait until they take the test again? Should it be immediately or wait? I think they should wait. Um, and again, it depends on are they just half a band off or are they a full band or a band and a half away mm. from what they want. They have to be realistic, really. Um, as I said before, it may take half a year to uh, improve by a band um, or, or more. And what about if, they've, if there's just one skill that they've fallen short on? Any suggestions there? It is possible to take to do the IELTS one skill retake for some candidates, depending on where they are. If it's a particular uh, skill, for example, speaking, where they're 
having trouble, I would always recommend that they look at their performance, get some advice about their performance, and look at the assessment criteria. Where is it that I need to improve? Can that be the same for writing? Absolutely. Mm. It, could be a, it could be a matter of grammar. It could be a matter of pronunciation if it's speaking. If that is the, the problem, then they need to really focus on that. They need to target their preparation. Don, another question we've received is about how to prepare. Should I prepare on my own or it's necessary to take a preparation course? Well, preparation courses are always valuable, I think. But remember, the main task of a learner is outside the classroom. If you're just doing, if you're just turning up to the class and that's the only English you ever use or hear, well, that's really not sufficient. Your main task is to use it every day whenever possible. So if you take that attitude, then that's the way to go, I think. So even a, a high band score like seven does need a lot of hours to reach that, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, very much so, yeah. And I, IELTS band seven is someone who is a good user of English. Another question we've received, on is whether it's a good idea to memorise some phrases in the IELTS speaking test or even in the IELTS writing test. Mm. What is your view about that? Well, I think it's a good idea, to be honest. Um, learning a language is a feat of memorisation. Whenever you learn a language, you're learning phrases, you're learning sentences, you're learning structures. And the important thing is to be able to deliver these in a natural way and in, and in an appropriate way. Mm. So with the writing particularly, it's no good having a, a prepared essay and bringing that to your writing because you're probably going to miss the point of the question. It'll be not completely relevant. It might affect task achievement. That's right. You'll be penalised for that. But if you're able to learn some structures that you can reconfigure to suit a particular context, then that is a, a good way to go. And in the speaking, um, one thing to avoid is to sound unnatural. That's right. You can memorise something, but you need to be able to express it very naturally. Speaking of grammar, Don, another question is that um, someone says they have trouble with their verb tenses. Mm. They make, always make errors with it. Yeah. How can they overcome this? Well, it's a difficult thing. Uh, for some first languages, tenses are not that important. The tense is implied by an adverb or something like that. But in English, of course, we're very particular about when something happened and we want to know how it happened. We want to know is it uh, perfect or continuous or is it simple? It's called aspect in English. Um, all of those things are sort of mysterious, but they also have a logic. To give you an example, if you're doing your speaking test in part two and you're asked to talk about an event that you attended, for example. Well, that's going to be in the past tense. So you should be aware of that. You should be ready. OK, I'm going to be using the past tense here in this context. So things like that can help you. And to be conscious of the different tenses that you hear in your everyday life and think, well, why did they use the present perfect and not the simple past? For and maybe example. understanding the context in which they were used. That's right. Mm. Uh, and so certain words will trigger a tense. Uh, if I use the word recently or yet, then that's probably going to be the present perfect tense, for example. Mm, that's right. Don, that brings us to the end of our chat today. But before you head off, could you please give us some of your top tips for our IELTS test takers to take away with them? There is preparation before the test, and that is preparing for success in terms of the level of your English. In other words, improving your English. There's preparation that you can do before the test in terms of uh, understanding the form of the test, the types of questions, the type of demands in each part of the test. That's all the stuff that you do before the test, okay? Then you can prepare for what you do in the test. And that means time management, for example. And it means being conscious 
of concentrating during the listening from the first moment to the last <laughs> moment, yes. et cetera. Yes. So all of those things are very important. But as a general rule, the better your English, the more success you'll have in IELTS. So focus on that. Don, thank you so much for your valuable insights. Thank you. Thanks, Rocco. Don't forget to look at the show notes where you can find links to free IELTS preparation materials and resources about today's topic. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. In the next episode, I'll be talking to Linda Alley from the content team at IDP IELTS about how to improve your English before you take IELTS. Thanks for listening to IELTS Prepare by IDP, your trusted guide for test day success. See you next time.